Hi everyone and welcome to another review from Class 47 Peter and today we're here to have a look at another new addition to the layout and today we're having a look at a model made by Dapple as you can see on the box and today we're going to be having a look at the North British Class 22 Baby Warship this model I bought from Worley along with the Class 57 you saw in the last review along with the China Clay Wagon and the GDR Shunters truck which you saw in the video showing you how I make my tarpaulins for covered wagon loads I bought this model from Dapple's stand and they were selling these for £100 and so I just had to go for one and I've had my eye on one of these for quite a while now this particular one is in BR Green livery with a small yellow warning panel and this is the one that has the split head coat boxes as you can see on the box there on the drawing of the model there on the front originally I was going to get one with the head coat discs but then when I saw the ones with the split head coat boxes I just had to have one of these because I do love diesels with split head coat boxes I'm quite a sucker for them so it had to be one with the split head coat boxes but anyway let's get this model open and see what it's like this, this particular one I have was actually the last one they had on the stand actually so I was very lucky to get this one so anyway so here's the box very nice and firm and I do like the colour on the box as well and I do like the drawings on the front there of the model that we get inside it really is quite nice then we remove the foam cover like so and there we have the model in all its glory so we have some detail packs inside here which are placed on either end here as you can see on the tray so we'll come onto these first before we move on to the model itself so we get two little plastic cases with detail parts in them and so in these we have these bits of detail which I believe you stick on the roof some dummy chain link couplings a couple of jumper cables as well as some air and vacuum pipes then in the other case of the detail parts we have the side valances to stick on the sides of the loco which will be fun to do then we have the train reporting numbers to stick in the head coat boxes and these are stickers so you can just simply stick them on the front of them okay so with all those detail parts now looked at we can now continue on with the unboxing so we'll remove the foam case check to see if there's anything else inside the box which there isn't and we'll just simply push out the plastic tray from the foam insert here and we can put the box to one side because we don't need that now well not for this video anyway and there we have the model and just look at that that does look stunning also see there's also some tape around here so we'll have to remove this or so now we can have a look at the instruction manuals so inside it talks to you about DCC and where to fit a decoder and you have a diagram there showing you where to fit it it also talks about fitting the accessories and the side valances and again there's a diagram there showing you where to fit them and it's basically the di to do with the direction of the loco and they, they are numbered on each side and it shows you which parts go on which side basically also shows you where to fit the detail on the buffer beams as well 
and the underneath there on the sides. Bogey lift ring fit its attachment points there basically. On the front it talks about the maintenance of the model and the lubrication with some diagrams that show you where to put the lubrication and how, where the, the clips of the bogies are with a diagram there showing you where they are. And on the back it gives you some brief history of the real locomotive as well as the specifications as well. Then we also have the 24 month mechanical warranty as well as the DCC guide to this model. So you can pause and have a read of this if you wish. I will not stop you from doing so. But I'm not going to need this because I don't use DCC. So I'm not going to really need it to be honest. So that can go in the bin. Okay, so now we can finish off the unboxing. And it is starting to lightly rain now. So can you hear that pattering on the shed roof? That's the rain. So just undo the clip of the box. And we'll lift the model out. Move these bits of cellophane on both ends of the loco. And we can now have a look at the model in closer detail. So first of all we're going to talk about how heavy the model is. And it is very heavy, so there's a lot of weight in this model, which is good. Because all the weight is there to provide the traction, and it needs the traction to be able to pull trains. Especially because as well, that this is only a small diesel loco. So it's going to need a lot of weight. Moving on to the detail now, which we do have. Sprung plastic buffers, as you can see. So you'll be happy if you like your sprung buffers. But for me, I don't have much care for them. But they're there. It would have been nice if the buffers had been made out of metal though. But at least we have some buffers on the model. We have a slim tension knot coupling already fitted in the end pocket there. Which it, that is the case on both sides of this loco. We also have a dummy coupling hook in the buffer beam and some holes to, for where the detail parts go. On the front of the loco we have warning signs, some separately fitted handrails, some separately fitted lamp irons, rivets around these head code boxes. And I do believe that this model has working lights as well. I believe it's the split head code boxes that light up. But we'll see later on for sure. We have glazing in the cab windows, then separately fitted window wipers. And on the window rings there we have some nice rivet detail which does look really nice. We also have some cab interior detail and it does look to be painted. It is hard to see but there is some painted detail inside there. Again we have more glazing in the side windows there in the sides of the cab and we have glazing in the cab door and the side cab windows and again rivets around the window rings there on the sides of the cab. We have separate limited metal handrails on the sides of the door there. We have the loco's room number D6321 crisply printed on the sides of the cab there, as you can see. In the windows on the body sides we do have some glazing, as you can see, which looks rather nice. We do have some lovely textile grills as well. On the sides there, as you can see. We also have a warning sign just there. 
I believe this is the boiler pod. So that opens up to the boiler. Because these did have boilers in them for steam heating. And we have some more rivet detail as well. We do have some nice detail on the bogies. We have the axle boxes and some pipe work and cables and the footsteps for the crew to climb up to get into the cab. And we have some springs as well. And just above the bogies you can see we do have some very nice detail. As you can see. But that will get covered up when the side valances are put in place. I mean the detail there is a little bit basic. It still looks nice to look at though. Although it is going to be covered up anyway. Then we have the water tank. Which is very nice. Obviously there's not much detail on it but it's there. And it does look quite nice. And I do like the bits of detail that's sticking up out of it that is separately fitted, as you can see. Especially that pipe work there. And that does look rather nice. Now the cab roof is not particularly interesting to look at as always, but there is some nice detail on it though. On the cab roof itself there's quite a lot of rivet detail. We also have a mesh grille, as you can see there, which does look quite nice. The doesn't seem to be a fan under there. That's not going to matter anyway though too much. As most of the time, particularly in my videos, you're not going to really see the fans. You wouldn't see the fans on the roof anyway, so that doesn't matter too much. It would have been nice if there was a fan under there, but it doesn't. I'm not personally bothered. And we also have the exhaust ports as well on the roof. On the other end of the loco, the detail is the same. Glazing in the cab windows, separately fitted window wipers, separately fitted lamp irons and metal handrails, a fitted and already fitted pre fitted NEM slim tension lock coupling, and of course plastic sprung buffers, as there was on the other end of the loco. And of course some warning signs too. Moving on to the livery application now, which is stunning. A very nice even coat of paint. No errors in the paint there. Correct shade of green. And a very nice shade of green at that too. And we also have the British Railways Lake Crest. Crispy printed on both sides. On the body sides as well. And that does look pretty stunning. Okay, so I have added some of the details to the DAPL Class 22. So, what have I added? Well, first of all, I've added the side valances, as you can see, and I've added them on both sides. I'll just turn them all around and show you the other side. Now, now some of these they do look a little bit wonky and off centre but that's fine because I have looked at pictures of the real locos and because these valances in real life they were designed to be removable and I have seen in some pictures where one of these has been removed but the rest of them are still in place and I have looked at some photos of the real class 22s and you, you can see that the side valances aren't all exactly perfectly straight you do get some that are wonky. And you know these as well on the model are also designed to be removable as well. So that's actually quite a nice little feature. And also, if you think about it, it does add some realism as well. Especially given that some of them in places are slightly wonky and others aren't. But it's like they're on the real locomotives. Because like I say, they're designed to be removable. So you would get some that are wonky anyway. Also, I've added the buffer beam detail on the on this end that I've chosen to have as the front of the loco, as you can see. And I've also added the some of the train reporting numbers. Now you can just about see them, but they are hard to see. But basically, the train reporting numbers I've gone for is two C three three on this end, and on the other end, 
I've chosen six B twenty four. Now you can't see them very well at the moment. You can just about see them, but it is hard to see them. But you know, I'm pretty sure that they. Cause I do believe that the split headco boxes light up, so they should be sit. They should be visible much more clearly then. Moving on to the running performance now of the Class 22. And as you can see, she runs smoothly straight out the box. There's no motors burning out. Stuttering movement. Or anything of the sort, she runs exactly as she should straight from the box. Okay, so I've turned the lights off now so you can see the working lights. So the split head code boxes do light up as well as the interior. And also one of those little lights at the front also lights up. However, it's only the lights at the one end of the split head code boxes. You can see the numbers now on the front. Well I can, not sure if it shows on camera. But the lights in the other interior doesn't light up. In the other end of the cab, I should say. One of the lights on the other end does light up. But the lights on the split head code box on the other end don't light up. So that is a little bit of a shame that it's only in the one end. I'd like to have seen interior lights on the other end. Or maybe at least even the split head code box on the other end lights up. You know, it would have been nice as well on the other end of the low coat if the two lights on the other end, the two small lights, would have also been done. We've only got the one on both ends. Moving on to the loaded test run now, in which the Class 22 is pulling the milk tankers. I mean, there's not many wagons behind the loco, but this still shows why the weight's important.
So overall then, the Depol Class 22, it is a nice model. I mean, we'll overgloss the fact that the interior lighting and the lighting in the split head coat boxes is only in this end of the cab rather than in both of them. But like I say, we'll overgloss that. But that aside, you know, it does have some stunning detail. It runs very well and smoothly. And you know, it's just an overall great model. And I would definitely recommend that you get one of these. Definitely, especially if you like your diesel hydraulics like I do. Because if you do have like a collection of them already, like for example the Class 52, Class 42 and the 35, then you've got, you've got to get yourself a Class 22. And I will be interested in getting the North British warship, as well as the Class 21 and the Class 29. So, I'll be looking forward to those. But moving on to the score now, so overall I will give the Dapple Class 22, I'm going to give it a 9 out of 10. This has been Class 47 Peter reviewing Dapple's Class 22 Baby Warship. I'll see you again soon for the next video, but until then, subscribe to the channel, check out my other videos, and I'll see you next time. Over and out.